Hello, my sisters and brothers. This is series 36. And uh, we're going to be talking about love is not rude. Um, love this subject because it teaches us how to be humble and to have humility at all times. Because this is truly what Jesus said. And we must understand that we are um, just like Christ. There's a lot of things that we have to take. And people are going to give it out as much as they can. Because that's the devil's job. is to work through people so that we can act like Christ. So he's doing his job and we got to do our job. We have to love no matter what. It's the, the, the attitude of Christ Jesus having a godly love from his Father handed down to us to also have that same agape love so that we can understand people and just let things go because it's not important. Um, Christ is much more important than for us to act like Satan, the beatitudes of Satan, because those things will not get us into the kingdom of heaven. Only the things that Christ, the beatitudes of Christ, those are the, th the attitudes that's going to get us in Christ. And that's why Paul, Peter, John, and all the rest of Matthew, Luke, John in the Bible always talks about Christ is love because you can't beat his love. <clears throat> you can't beat his love because without his, uh, without the agape love that he had um, from his father to come and die for us on the cross, I, I, I say again, how many of us would do it? And I, I don't think nobody would, not even me. Because uh, we think too much of self-interest. And we care about the flesh too much. So we have to deny the flesh as, flesh as much as possible. So that we can live like Christ. And I'm going to go ahead and begin this. Love is not rude. As I said before. We read that love is not rude. In verse 5. Love then has, go, has good uh, manners. Love has, love has manners. Uh, believe it or not, love has manners. And so we got to realize that we must have good manners at all times. And if you were ever raised up by those old people in the old days, they taught you how to have manners. They taught you how to not be rude to other people, especially your elders. So this is what love is trying to teach us here. And then it says in the Greek phrase, Greek phrase could own, could, could literally be translated does not act unbecomingly or does not act uh, inappropriately. Christian love does not seek the, 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 the cause problems and it does not belittle others. Uh, Christian love involves choosing appropriate action and res and responses of responses that help other people um rudeness is finding more and more acceptance in today's society uh public behavior and works that were unthinkable a generation ago are now Come, uh, come now is a commonplace. The fact fact is that rudeness is rooted in selfishness. Manners are meant to reduce the friction of human in, in interaction. This um, this reveals the lack of consideration of others. The ill, the ill mannered person is uh, communicating that it it's all about me. Love, by contrast, can be selfish. 
for the simple reason that love is con concerned for the other person's well-being. Therefore, love is mannerly. Um, Four paragraph. When Christians give t uh, testimonies to what they believe and defend the faith, they are they are to do so with gentleness and respect. I gotta stop on that because it's all about being respectful of one another. We must be respectful because that's how Christ is. Christ respects us. He respects us. He respects our will, our way, and we had to respect him because sooner or later we had to fall into his will anyway. And it's all about respecting one another. You will want. To, you would not want. Uh, someone to disrespect you in any form or way. So the only way you can respond to that is love. You cannot respond to it rudely because here's what happened. Anytime, uh, any situation, envy, strife, and jealousy going to crop up out of rudeness. And once you get, once you get envy in you, now you build up hate. Now you want to get back at the person. Now you want to stand your ground. Quarrel with the person. Or maybe even fight that person. It just depends on which way your flesh takes you. And Christ is saying right now, do like he did. They attacked him many times. Called him all kinds of names even the devil himself. But he stood his ground on the word of God. And this is how we must stand our ground on the word of God because that's the only thing that's going to save us anyway. He said, heaven and earth may pass away, but my word will never pass away. And this is what we must believe in. We must have a word for the devil every time he sticks his head up. We must fight him with the word of God in spirit and in truth in a very humble and meek way. A humility, you must be humiliated all the time in order to grow in Christ. I know it's tough. I mean, your skin just don't like it. My skin didn't like it, but I have to find out that I still have to take it regardless. If I want to be like Christ, and we all say we want to be like Christ. If I want to be like Christ, I got to take it. I got to take that cushion and just let it bounce off of me and think nothing about it because I got to forgive those people anyway. Because if I don't forgive them, then I have no love in me. God forgave us. He, th he even throw everything we've done in the sea of forgetfulness. He said, I remember them no more. So if he could do that, we can do it also. Whatever someone does against us, we can just throw it in the sea of forgetfulness because we want to love these people. We want to cherish these people like God did us. And you must have respect for one another. It's just like a husband and wife. Men have to respect that woman. Uh, you can't just act like she's one of the one of the guys, because she's not. You have to respect that woman. And women must respect the man. You just can't go up and just hug on a man or kiss on a man. You just can't do that. It's out of respect. I came up in the old school way back in North Carolina. This is where I came from. And this is what we had. We had respect for one another. We just didn't take ourselves and just throw it on anybody because that was rude. That's just being plumb rude. And this is what Christ is telling us to respect one another. We have the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit living in us and we disrespecting the Holy Spirit. And we can't do that. We must respect the Holy Spirit at all times because Christ 
did the same for us. And we must do the same for each one another. And that requires love. That requires that agape love that, 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 that says, I will love you unconditionally. I don't care what you do to me. I'm still going to love you anyway. And I'm going to tell you right now, if, 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 if husband and wife understood that concept, there would not be a whole lot of marriages breaking up, divorces. They will hang in there and, uh, and, and, and let God be first in their life and let God show them God in their life through all their pain and suffering. We just can't run from run from every little thing. I ran for the longest. But God finally stopped me and said, you can't run no more. You have to take this like a good soldier. You got to take it like a good warrior and just pray and watch me work through the prayers that I send up. God said he will answer my prayers. And through me sending up prayers and watching them come true, oh yeah, then you know that there is a God. And you find that in First Peter 3 and 15, which I'm gonna read later. In order in, in other words, we are to we are to witness in a loving, courteous way. This is not the not to say that Christians should never speak negatively negatively uh, regarding the actions of others. The gospel message condemns sin and calls sinners to repentance and, and faith in Jesus, Acts 17 and 30. However, there is a right way and a wrong way to do anything. And speaking against sin needs, needs not be Abrasive. Christians are called to speak the truth in love, and as we, and, and as we know, love is not rude. A oh, here's part I love this part. It says a husband who loves his wife will not treat her rudely, but with courtesy and respect. Husband and wife, this is how we must treat one another, with courtesy and respect, just like Christ. Christ treats us with courtesy and respect, and we must treat him the same way, and our neighbors the same way. Hmm. A pastor who loves his congregation will not speak of them condescendingly. Condescendingly or others a christian who loves his neighbor will will remember his manners and act in in a decor the fitting way meaning courteous way um a life of love is shown in our words and actions and will impact others in be in bringing godly bringing glory to the Lord and that's what it's all about when we speak in courteous ways treat people like like Christ would treat us we bring glory to God and this is what it's all about that's why I say you the, the scriptures tell you Paul was telling you that you must love you must love your brothers and sisters you got to it's a must because we want to make it into heaven. We want to see the new Jerusalem. In order to see the new Jerusalem, we must love. I'm finding, I mean, it's hard. I'm not going to tell no no lie. It's hard. I'm changing from that, that old way to the new way. But I, 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 I and, and the Lord has expressed on it, but it's needed. It's need. It's a must need to do this his way. So I, I just gave into it. 
You know, oh, did I get hurt? Yeah, I'm still getting hurt right today. But I just humble myself in humility and just absorb it and take it anyway. Because I know when I'm weak, Christ is stronger than I am. And he's the only one that can lift me up out of the uh, barriers of sin. And I thank God for that. And I'm going to read the scriptures too. Uh, I got three or four scriptures here I'm going to read with you. And it says, suffering for doing good. First Peter 3, 13 through 17. It says, 13 says, now who will want to harm you? If you are eager to do good, but 14, but even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you for it. So don't worry or be afraid of their threats. Because everything's in Christ's hand. Don't worry about it. They treat you wrong. They treated me wrong. But God stepped in. Answered my prayer, and I still got the victory. 15 says, Instead, you must worship Christ and Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. 16 says, But do, do this in a gentle and respectful way. Gentle and respectful way. Not a rude way. A harsh way. A hatred way. But a gentle and respectful way. Keep your conscience clear. Keep your conscience clear because when you pray, when somebody do you wrong, you pray, your prayer will be answered. That's why you keep your conscience clear. Because you want to be able to hear the voice of God at all times. And he hear your voice. Then if people speak against you, they will be ashamed. Then they see, they see what a good life you live. Because you belong to Christ. 17. Remember, it is better to suffer for doing good. If that, if that is what God wants than to suffer for doing wrong. And then um, Acts 17, 30 and 31, Paul preaches in Athens. 30 said, uh, God overlooked people, ignorance, about these things in earlier time, but now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sin and turn to him. 31. For he has set a, a day for judging the world with justice by the man he has appointed. And he proved to everyone who this is by, by raising him from the dead, which is Jesus Christ. The plan was already set in progress even before the beginning of time. And then it says, uh, unity is the unity in the body. Ephesians 4, 14 through 16. Number 14 says, when we will no, when we will no longer be uh, immature like children, we won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so so uh, clever they should li they should like the truth. Number 15. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. Number 16, he makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. 
it helps the other part grow so that so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love that's Christ's job is to make sure our body grow and full of love do what it, do what is good Titus 3 and 2 number 1 says uh remind the believer to submit to submit to the government and its officers they should be obedient always ready to do what is good they must not slander anyone and must avoid quarreling instead they should be gentle gentle and show true humility to everyone it's the same thing we must do it we must and I, it's hard but it's okay though god will see you through it and then uh have the attitude of christ that's in philippians 2 1 through 5. number one says is there any encouragement from belonging to christ any comfort from his love is there any comfort from his love any any fellowship together together in the spirit are you are your hearts tender and compassionate is your heart tender is it compassionate ready to help one another ready to help your fellow man in whatever that's going on in his life is it that tender or compassionate number two says then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose the purpose in one mind is to love your fellow man and when we do that we have fulfilled the law of god through loving your fellow believers and your unbelievers you got to love them too because he said love and kindness have i drawn thee so the love that's in you will draw them to the christ that they see in you so it's a twofold thing and that's all we got to do having the attitude of christ philippians 2 1 through 5 number one says uh is there any encouragement beyond christ okay fuck i read that mm, okay number three that's where i was uh don't be selfish don't try to impress others mm -hmm. i'm gonna say it again don't be selfish don't try to impress others don't be selfish don't try to impress others because you're not getting anywhere with God by doing that. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. Be humble. Just be humble. Just be humble. That's all you got to do. Don't uh, don't look out only for your own in interests. But take an interest in others, too. Number five says, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. We must, and that's taking on the, the whole arm of God, the whole body of God. Taking on the whole fullness of the love, the agape love that God gave through the Holy Spirit, through wisdom and understanding, reading his word every day, fasting. I can't tell you how important fasting is. When you fast, and I'm talking about the old school fast, Isaiah 48. When you fast, fasting denies the flesh. Fasting will take you into a moment of denial, denying 
the flesh from operating. And that's what we need. This is how you get rid, get rid of desires of the flesh. And if you've ever fasted for a long time and understand how you fast and what you were fasting for, you're fasting to remove those desires, those sinful desires. And I'm going to tell you, that's the only way it can be removed. Because even, even the, the people came to Jesus and told him, um, why don't they want to know why they, that the, his disciples wouldn't fast? And Jesus told them, they don't have to fast because I'm here. But when I go away, they're going to have to fast. Because when Jesus left them, they was in turmoil. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to do. They was running, hiding. That's what they were doing, hiding. And so you have to fast to get rid of that fear. Because I'm going to tell you, when I fasted, I, when I first started to get into the Word of God real heavy, I fasted for four and a half years, eating one meal a day, 12 o'clock, because I had to work. So the Lord gave me that one meal to, to survive on for that whole 24 hours. I would eat for one hour. I could put anything in my body for that from 12 to 1. But after 12 to 1, I couldn't drink nor eat until the next day at 12. And it just stripped me of a desires that I had in the flesh. I don't care what kind of desire you had. I don't care smoking, drinking, uh, having sex. I don't care what kind of desire you have. Being proud, being jealous, being envy, it strips you of that. And that's the most powerful thing that I had in my life at that time. It stripped a lot of myths from me that I had. And I just became so humble and, hum and the humility. I lived off of humility. I lived off of being humble. And this is what God is trying to tell you. It will erase all the, the uh, rebellious ways, being rude to people. It will just make you humble. And God fights all your battles after that. I'm a living witness. I know. I know. But we're going to close it up for this um, uh uh, series as far as love is not rude. Let us not forget that. Let us grow in love and treat our brothers and sisters the way we should treat them in Christ Jesus. And I just want to leave you with that message. I pray to God that it will give you some clear understanding on this love uh, factor so that you can be better Christians and better people in Christ Jesus. Until the next section, session, series, I say, God bless you, God keep you. Until we see each other again, I love you.